Man, I did not think the hype was going to be so real for the second iteration of the Model O, but boy is it ever. And I finally got one right here in my hands. Let's not waste any more time. You ready? Let's go. Nah, I'm playing. It's just the cable. Today's video is brought to you by Capsmiths, purveyors of fine artisan keycaps that are 3D printed and hand painted right here in the US. Compatible with all MX style stems with some insanely detailed sculpted designs and even models of some of your favorite MX switches. No group buys or pre-sales, these are ready, in stock, and shipping within two to three days. And right now you can use code BADSEEDTECH to save 15% off your order. Click the link in the description to check them out at capsmiths.com. Yo, I'm Brian P, you're watching Bad Seed Tech, and today we're taking a look at the Model O minus gaming mouse from Glory PC gaming race. For transparency, this was sent out by the folks over at Glorious, but as you should know by now, doesn't affect my review in any way. So the Model O minus, if you haven't put it together yet, is a smaller version of the famed Model O. And that's it for this time. I'm Brian P. Thanks so much for watching. So retailing for $49.99 for matte and $59.99 for gloss, it's smaller and lighter. I don't know if the camera is going to show the scale, but it definitely looks a lot smaller parked right next to the Model O. Glorious does have measurements posted on the site if you're curious, but I always do my own so they're consistent across all the models. Eyesight test. So we're looking at 120 millimeters long, 57 at the front flare, 62 at the rear, 55 at the grip with a height of 35 millimeters. So we've got the same four flavors again in terms of colors and coatings. So we've got matte and gloss white and matte and gloss black as well. Weight here is reduced down to 58 grams for the matte and 59 grams for the glossy. They are astoundingly accurate on my scale. Packaging here is largely the same. Nice looking display box. Internal stuff has a bit of an upgrade here. New sticker in here. Who doesn't love a guy with a mighty beard, right? Right? Main triggers here are Omron, 20 mil rated, same comfort grooves. I have heard from some of you that you had some issues with the original Model O where your front triggers had a little too much side play going on. I didn't have that issue with any of the four copies that I received. It is worth noting too, the Glorious does not cherry pick the units that go out to reviewers. These units come directly to us from the factory overseas, still sealed in their original packaging, and they come out of the same batches that your orders will be filled from. So all that is to say, I don't have any issues like that on any of these copies either. Sure, there is some side play when you're actually attempting to move the triggers sideways, but it feels plenty stable under regular use. Light, fast, crispy clicks here, no pre-travel for me, and very minimal post-travel. Side buttons here, Huano switches, I do enjoy them. They got a nice crisp click to them. They have a little bit of side play, more so on the rear button than the front button. Great shape, great position, regardless of which grip you're playing with. Scroll wheel here is very light tactile, large rubber texture bumps, 24 steps, Huano switch. In general, I love the scroll wheel here. The only thing of note is that the force to trigger it was noticeably greater on my matte white copy than on my matte black copy. And the ascended cord is back again. Still not my favorite from a look standpoint, but still a great performing cable. Though there are better out there now from the likes of G Wolves and the new MM710. Most people will only look to paracord this if they're trying to match their setup. I have perfected the paracord approach for these mice. I'll have a video out shortly showing how you can arrange your cord before you start so you can avoid any issues with scroll wheel binding. I don't even think you need a bungee here, but some of you may still prefer that. Feet here are the same white PTFE, 100% virgin PTFE to be exact. You're just waiting for that special someone. These are very good for stock feet. Rounded edges, great glide, love these on a hybrid silicone pad. Again, most users will probably never feel the need to replace these with anything different. I know CorePad makes some aftermarket skates for these, but I've not tried them. And an absolute genius move Despite the mouse frame being smaller, the glides stay the same size. That means any replacement feet you ordered from Glorious or any aftermarket feet you may have purchased already fit. Super smart. Now the topic of these coatings here, I normally use the matte. It has great grip if you normally have dry hands and it doesn't fingerprint or show oil like some of the matte coatings out there. I kind of shunned the gloss coating on the first go round, probably subconsciously because it's difficult to photograph and the black does show fingerprints, but it's a really nice coating actually. It gets really grippy with a bit of moisture as well. Lastly, the sensor here is a 33 
360. We all know what it is. Default DPI levels are 400, 800, 1600, and 3200. Indicator LED on the bottom, DPI switch on the top. Despite this, it's done in such a way to where triggering it has to be deliberate. You won't hit this thing on accident. Some of the best mouse RGB in the business is back as well. Scroll wheel here looks great. Side ribbons look great. No denying, this is a gorgeous mouse. You can't adjust modes on the mouse itself or disable it altogether if someone hurt you. Still the same great software here as well. You can dial in your RGB further in here, rebind buttons, assign macros, adjust your polling rate, and set up custom DPI levels in increments of 100 with support for different X and Y values, even change the LED color for the indicator LED. Once you're done, you can save all the settings to the mouse and they travel with the mouse permanently. Good stuff. All right, size and shape stuff. The original Model O drew a lot of comparisons to the FK1 shape because it shared a lot of measurements with that mouse. So logic would probably tell you that the Model O minus is gonna be like the FK2, the FK1's little brother but it's not completely. Actually, it's even smaller in virtually every measurement. The FK2 in hand is a medium mouse, and the Model O- minus is definitely a small mouse for me. In terms of length, it's longer than the MM710 and the Ultralight 2, but shorter than virtually everything else out there. In terms of grip width, at 55 millimeters, it's also narrower than just about everything except the Ultralight 2 in stock form. If you remember, the only way I was able to use the Ultralight 2 was with excessive amounts of Infinity Skins, and it still wasn't my top performer, though it really ranked up there, and it did teach me a lot about fingertip grip. Even so, with the Model O- minus, this is one mouse that is just flat out too small for me personally. Even using fingertip or claw, it's just too narrow and it causes cramping for me after a bit. As a reminder, my hands are 20.5 centimeters by 10.5, so this really shouldn't come as any surprise and isn't an indictment of the mouse by any means. Also, not surprisingly, I didn't play my best here, so it's not much of a highlight reel today. Here's my 3D aim trainer score. My tile frenzy scores were like low to mid 80s, pretty humbling. I just couldn't hit flow. I was constantly actively thinking about how I was holding the mouse or where my next target was, constantly missing flicks. So fellas or ladies with big hands, we're gonna have to call this one a pass. If you're trying to figure out if this is gonna be a good size for you, the closest I can compare it to in hand is the S2, but it's slightly narrower at the grip and it's not as tall. I do wanna take a minute to shout out a viewer named Vaso. He got me hip to a dude named Aimer7. This guy wrote probably the best overall aim training to real game improvement guide probably the world has ever seen. And he holds some serious high scores in Kovacs. I'll link that guide and his Twitter down below. It's definitely worth your time to check that out. Closing out here, the Model O- is exactly what it's supposed to be. It's a smaller Model O for people that found the original Model O too big, plain and simple. Quality control felt good here as well. Glorious has been insanely transparent about the challenges they face with the original rollout and some of the quality control issues and the steps they've taken. I know some people had issues with the original Model O, but versus the amount of mice these guys shipped, the failure rate is incredibly low, and these guys are constantly looking to improve and refine. If you have a smaller hand, this is an easy recommend, especially for the $50 or $60 asking price, especially when you figure in that you really don't have to change out the cord or the feet, and you still have a pretty banger lightweight mouse. I have just a few more mice to get out, and then I'll be putting out a video ranking my top five with updated impressions, so stay tuned for that. There are affiliate links down in the description below. As always, any questions, hit me in the comments or drop by the Discord. And that's really it for this time. I'm Brian Pete. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, hit that sub button, and until next time, stay up.